My name is Arjun and I'm a data scientist. I hold a PhD in chemical engineering and petrophysical uh, techniques in, for the oil and gas industry. My current project is on uh, predicting men's tennis outcomes in the professional tour. Uh, have you ever had a situation where your team has won a game that it was, or has lost a match that it, that it was supposed to win? Uh, this happened to me for the Minnesota Vikings of 1998-1999, where they predicted to win the Super, they were predicted to win the Super Bowl, they never even got there. Uh, they lost a championship game. In addition, uh, players like Boris Becker, who was my favorite as a child, um, did not uh, perform as expected in some of his matches against lower ranked opponents. So my project is looking at uh, what factors in tennis uh, are predictive for victory or loss. The data in the project come from matches in, uh, from, 2000, from 1992 to 2017. Uh, the data is organized in rows, where each row has the stats of a particular player in a match and whether they won or lost. Typically, this is uh, the workflow for this is to split the data into two parts. One, uh, one set that trains a model and then the next set that sees how well the model does. Following this procedure, uh, it leads to an accuracy of 80%. This is a little problematic because public uh, investigations have shown accuracies between 60 and 70% for, uh, for tennis predictions. And the reason uh, that we're getting such a high accuracy is because we, because we ended up uh, using the stats from particular matches to predict those matches, which would, would not be available uh, in the match itself. So we can resolve this by uh, generating these stats since we want to use them from previous matches of particular players. So first we have to gather the stats statistics for any particular player as shown in the first the table shown here. Uh, for, for one player which we call player one, uh, the statistics such as aces, double faults, and services, service points one are gathered for each match. Now this can be uh, converted for the first row, for the first match uh, that depicted in the first row, uh, into an average from the, from the remaining rows. And that's shown here. So the, the red box on the top is replaced by the statistics from, statistics from the previous matches uh, averaged together, which is shown in the bottom, uh, as it was in the bottom red box. So the process for the, the workflow is shown pictorially as follows. Um, we applied um, models after making, generating those previous match stats, and the models include uh, random force and logistic regression. So what helps with, with making better predictions? Um, for both random force and, and logistic regression show the highest uh, predictor, the, the best predictor is uh, the ranking of the player, which is on the uh, bar showing the extreme left of each plot. Uh, the rank force also shows that certain, uh, the match, the tournament level, so if it's a, a more high prestige tournament, also is a good predictor for uh, success or, or victories in a, in a match. Uh, interestingly, uh, one factor that I thought would be more important, the surface on which they're playing are relatively low on the on the importance uh, from both logistic regression and random forest. So uh, we continue uh, work on this uh, project by considering one to consider a simpler model, just uh, so that we can see what would happen if no previous statistics were uh, computed. The another thing to do would be to cluster by different play, players or to see uh, to cluster uh, players together to see what the what playing styles can be grouped together as well as distributing the statistics instead of just looking at overall statistics uh, looking at the statistics get for a given player on each particular surface that they play on which uh, for example uh, grass or clay so I'll end with that, and uh, again, my contact information is given here uh, to check out uh, my work. Uh, the GitHub link is at the bottom of this page. Thank you.